Okay, so the first thing what you need to do is you need to verify the secure agent status. Uh, you log into the UI and go to administrator service. Just check your secure agent. This has to be always up and running. Okay, so if, if you see that the, the services are not coming up, say not all the services are running, you know, which means that the services are still coming up. Because uh, my laptop person hibernate, you know, I just started. Sometimes you may see this uh, services like, you know, you're seeing some error here, right? Data integration server is enabled, but the status is showing us error. So what you need to do is you may have to restart that service, the service alone. How do you restart it? You select that service alone. Click on stop. And, you know, you can start it back again. So the services would be, uh, you know, starting up and in a couple of minutes, you should be able to see all this services up and running. So this is extremely important for us to make sure that these services are up and running or else, you know, you won't be able to work on your development. This is clear. It's clear, Aris. Okay. Let me refresh. But uh, Arun, let me that, refresh. Okay. That's very funny. You just have to click on refresh status. Yeah, Arun, when I open this status. Arun, you may have Yeah, tell me. Yeah, tell me. Yeah, when I open to this, uh, no, lock of security agent, it shows that the common integration components is failed. So what shall I do for that? Yeah, I just shown you, right? You know, you just have to restart yeah, the services. You, right? you know, you just have to restart the services. Okay, just click on that component alone, that service alone and restart the services so that, you know, there would be, it will take uh, some time because generally, you know, one of the service, which is a bundle of uh, all these four services, all all of them have to be up and running. If you don't see any one of them up and running, you know, you won't be able to actually work on your development. So this is, this is extremely important, you know, because in your secure agent, you know, when you go to your this path agent, agent, when you go to this path type, you go to apps and agent core, there is a file called uh, agent core log. Okay, so if I just open this log, right? Now, you'll be able to see this log gets appended every time because this is going to make sure the services are coming up. You know, you, you can just read this, that this is a huge log, which is actually ensuring the services are coming up, you know, which will download the necessary packages and ensure these are important for you to connect to the respective sources. You just have to click on refresh status and, you know, uh, so the, if it is still saying, you know, starting up, starting up, and it's still not coming up, you know, you can go to audit log and you can check this uh, status here. See, now it is saying the status has changed to running. The service data integration server has changed to running. Okay. So if you just click on refresh status, go back to details again, click on refresh status, or just refresh your page again, complete page. This may take a minute or two again. Okay. See now the all the services are up and running right now. See, 
we got everything up and running right you understood so if any one of the services is not if running right you just one of the services is not running right you just have sunil uh, please go on mute okay sunil, so uh, just go on mute. okay so just have to hello hello sunil go on mute please sunil go on mute please y yeah okay so you just have to make sure all the services are up and running okay so now the services are up and running we can go back to the data integration and we can go back to our uh, folder where we were working on creating the respective jobs so we can go back to our uh, project and the folder okay so we were discussing about uh, the source properties right the source properties we were discussing so we'll go back to the uh, the same topic again so as part of you know source properties for example i want to uh, have you know different conditions for example i want to write a custom query okay so how do i do it so let's say if i create a mapping select my mapping create a mapping and i just name this mapping as m underscore by data and query okay i'll just take this as an example go to my source So in my source, I'm selecting my Oracle connection, which is Impi SRC. And when I select a source type as single object, you also get multiple objects where you have a database dependency. You also get query and parameter. Okay, now in this scenario, I'm selecting a query because I can directly query my database instance. Instead of selecting my object, I can also select a query. So Let's say I'm, I'm I'm doing this query called customer right this from this table customers. Okay, I'll just put this query, find query, and I'll put in this one. Click on validate. What I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to select some columns based on some condition where state is equal to this and all that, right? So uh you're getting the SQL command not properly ended. So why we are getting this error? Because I have to provide my schema name before the table name. So what I need to do uh, from customers, right? So I need to put infa rc dot customers. I try it again. Validate this again. Mm. Okay, so before we do this, let me try it again here from here. Okay, I'm getting this customer ID, company name, first name, last name, address one, address city, city, state, postal code, phone, email from customers where state is state in this one and email like uh, order by one by two description is what I got here, right? So when I put this query, why, you know, we, we, why we are getting this error? Let's try it one more time. Select customer ID. Uh, You're getting customer uh, custom queries valid because I just removed that uh, you know that uh, semicolon here. Understood. And then if you want to if you want to just click on query options, see the query options is not valid because we directly selected the query here. You understood? 
I just gave the query directly here and you know I am I'll be getting the fields now as part of my custom query so is this clear to you uh, how do you get a query here now from this data this is the output I got because I'm getting an output of this query and then I'm getting the output let's say now in this scenario I want to just keep something like a pass through because I don't want to do any changes I'm just putting a pass through expression what is a pass through expression we are not doing any changes just as uh, just a pass through data from source to expression go back to your target and again you know you want to load into a different target again click on select let's say you want to load this data to some target table uh, which is existing target go to customers okay, let's say i'd say target underscore customers 2 okay tgt underscore customers 2 so what is my uh, tgt underscore customers 2 uh, is it having data let's verify select start from uh, tgt underscore customers 2 right tgt underscore customers 2 this is having some data here which is customer id company name first name last name address one address two city state postal code phone email okay we are getting all these fields here right so let's say if i want to uh, if i want to truncate the target click on truncate target and you go to field mapping now field mapping i've told you how do how do you map the fields how do you map the fields there are two ways to do it one is automatic okay other one is manual if you select manual you want to map one by one you can do that by dragging and dropping it here or you can just select smart map so that it automatically smart maps the fields using smart map or exact field name let's say you don't want to do it that way you can clear mapping and you can do it one by one as per your requirement so hope all of you are clear about this basic steps is it clear understood yeah Sorry, I came late. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I can. I see a new student joined. Uh, is it Sultan? Yes. Yeah. Hi, hi, Sultan. I think this is your first uh, class, so hope you're uh, you please go through the previous uh, recordings and uh, you can understand about how to get started with uh, secure agent installation. And you know, this is our uh, third session today and uh, we've started uh, from last week we started with the basic uh, source properties so i'm still explaining about the source properties okay yeah so yeah, i, I already, just come i already okay you I already have... i already installed i already installed informatic on my laptop i have, oh, have force our, our, our have force in a background so um, i should be good when i watch the videos oh, okay okay that's great great to know that okay and the mapping is completed now so now we have completed this mapping so what what i need to do now is i just have to create a mapping configuration task so there are two ways to do two ways to go about it like how do you do it you copy the mapping name and then you click on the three dotted lines click on new mapping task or you can do the other way around where you can just go to the home page and click on new mapping task and this is the easiest way to do it because if you go the other way around you may have to select the mapping again but now i just selected from the dots i put mct copy my mapping name select the runtime environment which is my local secure region group click on next and click on finish okay so uh, this way I can create my mapping task and also you can keep your monitor open right click on it open a new tab just keep your monitor open and you are put to run this 
just click on run you can go to my jobs and you know this is in the starting status and from starting it will go to queued status uh, from queued it will go to running status so now it is in running status you can click on the instance name and uh, you know you'll be able to see the statistics of the job okay so we got three rows uh, loaded to tgt underscore customers two let's go back to this and just run this and you'll be able to see the three rows right you got three rows loaded to target table this is clear have you understood this so this yeah. is about so this is about a custom query you know a custom query that you can do let's say you you go back to the same uh, you go back to the uh, dashboard again you know this is your dashboard and you want to go to uh, the same you know uh, to your uh, jobs and you want to make a copy of it let's say you want to take a different scenario right now you want to uh, take this custom query example let's say if i just select this mapping i want to copy this mapping i want to do a different scenario right now okay i select this mapping click on select it and you can see there is something called copy to and move to. There are two options. You can see where, where you can do a copy to or move to. What does it mean? Copy to is making a replica or a copy of that job. Move to is like cut and paste. You, you just cut it and paste it to a different location. But right now, what I'm doing is I'm doing a copy to, which means that I'm making a copy of the existing job. So it says a naming conflict. I want to keep both. So copy one, you know, automatically the job will get created with underscore copy one. Okay. So I have the same job that is created with a different name called copy one. Let's say I want to just name this as employee data SQL array. I want to just name it as employee data SQL overhead example. I'll just save this. Let me close all the previous uh, job. I don't have to keep it open. Go to my source. Now in this scenario, I don't want a query. I want to take my object itself. Go to select. And let's say I want to uh, I want to select uh, customers table now, right? So I'll just select customers. Go to your query options and uh, we have seen how to do a filter and sort last week. But in this scenario, what I'm trying to do is I'm having a pre-SQL, a post-SQL and SQL overwrite. Okay, in this query, what I'm trying to do is I'll be putting this query called cust ID First name, last name, and all this, where state is equal to, uh, sorry, this is a parameterized value. Let's say I will go, we'll come back to parameterized value later. Let's say if I just have to uh, put a query, you know, from my customer table, select star from customers, and, you know, I'll just put select uh, customer ID, or we can take the same query. We can take the same query again. Let's say if I just run this query, you know, what am I getting? I'm getting this state is equal to California. I'm getting this. Okay. So let's say if I put some other state, I want to just make sure I'm getting at least two or three records. Okay. I'm getting two records here. Uh, that's fine. I'll just take this query. Uh, so I'm just putting the same query here, which is select customer ID, uh, company, first name, and all this from this table, and uh, click on save. And target, 
let's say if I go back to the target again, let me put uh, the same thing, TGT underscore customers two and uh, field mapping would be uh, similar. I'll just have to validate this query. It's already truncated, the uh, table is in truncate, right? So now I need to create a mapping task. Copy this. Okay, let's run this, click on run. Starting, you can even see it in the monitor also in your running jobs. Queued status, and from queued it will go to running status. Click on this mapping configuration task. You'll see the statistics of the job that is started, end time, duration, what is a secure agent. So you got two rows, right? So if you just go back to the same target again, you get two rows here. Okay, have you understood this? All of you understood about SQL override query? This is simple, right? You just have to, you know, you, you put any query, uh, which is just, you know, querying at your uh, database at the Informatica Cloud, you know, you can just have to get the data that you want to filter out fine any any questions from anyone on this so both are same right so when when can we use like the, these options yeah both are similar but you know you have a custom query let's say you have 100 fields okay you have around 100 fields and you you directly query the table uh, using a custom query and you also have a SQL override where you can provide a SQL override but the only difference is when you are doing a SQL override you provide a table name directly you go to source and you know you you directly select the table name from your instance that in SRC my schema right I'm giving my object name directly but in case of my uh, query what I'm trying to do here in my query in the query option, what I'm trying to do is, um, I'm trying to query against against a database instance with the query option. The type is source type is query here, not the table. That's the difference. Okay, that's the difference. And you you may be having a larger query in real time. You know where you may have to query that table. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. So now, if I uh, if I go back to uh, a property in source, let's say I'll take a third scenario called uh, pre SQL. Okay, a pre and post SQL. Let's say I want to uh, I want to do employees uh, data pre and post SQL. Okay. Let's say I'll just put M underscore employees data pre and post SQL. Example. What is pre and post SQL? Uh, I'll tell you. Go to source. Select your InfoSRC connection. Okay, uh, so in my uh, employees data, select start from employees. I'll be having some records, right? Uh, so if I go back to my tables directly, employees data, employees, I'll be having some data 
if I go back to data again, you'll be seeing that there is there is uh, data here with different uh, rows, correct? So my pre-sql, what is my pre-sql? Pre-sql is something where I want to go to my advanced option and there is something called pre-sql and where I want to insert a row into my employees table before the job runs. So how do I do it? For example, this is my pre-sql, right? Uh, I'll just open this. I want to insert into this table with some data belonging to an employee with some data with this value. 977. Let's say uh, I'll just verify if 977 is already existing. Uh, you can go back to this query again. So let's start from employees where employee ID is equal to 977. Yeah, 977 is already existing. Let's say I'll put 1977. This is my employee ID. If I just put 1977, it doesn't exist. So I can insert this, right? I'll copy this statement, put it in my uh, insert statement, insert into employees. So I'm giving a schema name there which is my table name. That is my pre-sql. Okay, and then if I go back to my post-sql, what is my post-sql? Post-sql is, let's say my uh, target table name is emp underscore test one. Okay, I, I'm putting this table name as tgt, SRC tgt underscore test one. Is the table name existing? Let's verify it. The table exists, but there is no data inside that, right? So we have we can have a table called delete from infrastrc.tgt underscore emp test. Let's say I want to create it on the flow, on the fly, on fly, you know, on the fly. Let's say if I just put tgt uh, tst2, table doesn't it doesn't exist at all. Test two is there. One second. Okay, uh, let me save this. Click on target, go to your target, select your connection, click on select, create new at runtime, tgp underscore emp, underscore test two. Again, that's my target table name. Click on save. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to do a pre and post SQL. Okay, I go to my uh, advanced options. I'll say you insert a query, insert a row, and upon your successful load, you also delete from the table, tgt underscore emp underscore test two. Okay, so copy this mapping name. And these are the repeated steps that you do every time. You, you create a mapping task. And you run this. Go to your monitor, or you can just go to your My Jobs. You can see this. Failed. Okay, why is it failed? One second. Uh, it's already used by an existing object. One second. I think. 
okay we have a table which is already used fine so <coughs> let me do one thing let's say i'll just put test 5 okay maybe i that's my bad because this table is already existing it's me okay this table doesn't exist let's say i put test 5 okay and i'll save this but again i also need to change it in the mapping so i go back to my uh, target and instead of uh, test 2 what i'll do is i'll put this test 5 because this is a target that we are creating on the fly right on the go we are creating this target So I just updated my mapping. I'm not doing anything on my mapping task. So I can go back to my mapping task. I don't have to refresh anything. Automatically, this will get refreshed. Okay. So you just have to run this. Click on run again. Go to your monitor. You'll see that there's one more instance name that is starting up. Just keep refreshing this. The status will uh, change from starting to queued, queued to running status. Okay, this is running. Okay, so you may be seeing the number of rows is 22, but how do you know that this pre sequel and PostSQL has worked. You need to check the log. How do you do that? Click on download session log. Okay, click on download session log and open the log. And you need to, uh, if you just scroll down, right, you'll be able to see this. Executing pre SQL, uh, pre session SQL per source, insert into this table 1977. Okay, this is inserted into this table. Uh, so if I go back to my uh, query again, let's say so this is inserted row, okay? It's only inserted row, but what about what? The delete statement, you know, which is my uh, post sequel. This is already done now. Pre sequel. Now, what is post sequel? Once your job is completed. And once the data is loaded, right? So this is invoke the SQL. This is invoke the SQL. It connected to the database instance. See, you're saying that here, you know, it connected to a database instance, target tables. And, you know, here uh, you'll be able to see some delete statement here. So, is this clear? About pre SQL and post SQL. Any any questions from anyone on this? Bona or Sunil or anyone? Any questions? Uh, no, I don't. It's clear. So, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Yes, I got a I got a quick question. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So, um, yeah. okay. So that's about source properties. Uh, you know, we have your source uh, pre SQL, post SQL, and you know, you get uh, you get multiple properties under your uh, source properties. You know, where you can work on the data when you invoke a source. When you how do you uh, connect to different sources? See, the connections are uh, critical for us. You need to create the connections, and you need to get going right. 
So I hope all of you have created the connections and uh, the flat files and you know you have your database instance up and running as part of the prerequisites that, that I spoke right. You need to have all this created. If you have not done please do it ASAP because we are about to move to the next topics and you need all this up and running. Uh, okay, I'm putting it in the out. Yeah. Sorry. Tell me. Uh, the for uh, this Oracle, uh, you open the SQL plus, right? So you say mm -hmm. connect as this DBA. So what do you have given for the password? Password can be anything. You can just give give the same password, right? Password in the sense like what what exactly are you asking about? Which password are you referring to? Um, while installing, I didn't create any user ID or password. I just said uh, you said like use the built-in uh, functional. Uh, something right user no that, so that is for the installation. no no that is for the installation see in this in this link right uh, this link that i gave you right if you just go to that link again what is he saying in that link you know is given you clear steps you know this is available in google first you need to download the oracle software and you need to launch okay here is given you the screenshots how do you set it up set up the software select the database instance Okay, this is a standard. Uh, you you can just select standard edition because this is not your. It's not on on your organization or your company or your client that you're working on. It's your personal instance. Specify Oracle Home user, which means that you are selecting a built-in account here, right? A built-in account, and after that, you know, uh, once you select a schema, okay, you need to select a user, and it would uh, prompt you to select what is your global service name once you provide the details at your next steps when you do it it would ask you to provide the details of your instance name for example let's say in my case what was the instance i gave i gave the service name as infa orcl you need to provide the service name okay and then once you complete the installation, you have to launch your SQL plus. You need to launch your SQL plus and then uh, you need to create a instance. I've shown you that day, right? How to create an instance. Yeah, you open SQL plus and you gave like connect as this DBA and I don't know what to give as the password in there. Yeah, here. No, I'll tell you. So once my uh, installation is completed, right? What I do is connect as this DBA. Mm -hmm. it's a manager you know the password is manager it's a default password okay manager is a password okay. okay then you can create create user uh, test identified by test i uh, gave you the steps right you can refer to the recording yeah this one i know i just want to know the password okay it's manager so i i googled it i didn't get the password no that, that's a default password okay the default password is you know uh, uh, SysDBA, when you log on as a SysDBA, the default or a universal password is manager. Okay, got it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, and then um, you may have to, uh, you know, uh, I I would uh, check with organizer to share uh, the schema to you and the flat files also. Okay, by today you'll be getting those details. All of you will be able to get that. Details on the flat files that are needed for practice and also the schema that you have to import it But you can refer to the videos if you are stuck somewhere if you're not able to check something, you know, just check that But make sure that you're completing all this Okay so, so quick question. So to watch the videos do I have to open an account with go go to meetings? You can check with uh, the organizer, you know, uh, Vishal Path, uh, they'll be able to provide you those uh, recordings. Uh, they can give you those recordings which are already part of uh, the sessions to, for the previous ones. And you can go through them and you can do the necessary things. Um, Arun, uh, sorry, the, if I give us a manager as password, it says error TNS protocol adapter error. Which means that there is some problem with your installation, Abuna. You have to refer to that, uh, you know, uh, 
you can probably you can refer to YouTube on the recordings. Have you downloaded everything properly? Because Oracle installation is a time taking process. You know, you, you have to do it correctly. There may be some steps, you know, which you may have not, you may have make, missed out, I guess, while installing it. Mm -hmm. I so, it actually it, it took me time, but I uh, as per the Google, uh, I mm -hmm. installed it. Okay. Uh, I don't know. If you're getting a uh, TNS error, which means that your TNS instance is not running. You know, uh, generally, when you have your Oracle, <laughs> thing, right? In my system, you can see that Oracle is running here. Just Oracle SQL Developer is what you are seeing. Now, how do I verify it again? I need to check my services.msc. In my services.msc, uh, uh, I have to go to my Oracle. See, if you're looking at this screen, right? You're seeing this Oracle Aura DB2 Home 2 listener, TNS listener. This is running. The status is running. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have to verify similarly in your system if your TNS is running. So there is a step-by-step -step process, okay? Uh, the link that I gave you, or you can go to go through some recordings in YouTube, how to install, you know, uh, how to install Oracle uh, 19C. Okay. Maybe some other site, you know, not necessarily in this step, but you know, the, you, you can go to some Oracle uh, site itself, installing Oracle 19C. They'll be giving you that uh, detailed steps here, how to do it. Okay. So yeah. if you do this way, this is going to help you out. You know, not just that site alone. I'm just giving you, I uh, just gave you one example how to do it. You have to go through all these steps properly, and then you need to create a database. Once you create a database, only then you'll be able to access. Without creating a database, you can't do anything, right? You need to create a database, and then you need to create a uh, service name, a service ID name. In my case, I gave info or CLS my service name, which is my global database name. You can go through this entire site, Oracle site. Okay. And go. Through this. this is it's going to take time because it will take uh, minimum uh, 45 minutes to one hour. Sometimes it takes around one to one and a half hour, you know, for the entire yeah. installation. Purpose. It's going to download all the necessary binaries into your uh, uh, folder necessary packages that are required and then it will install right please go through the steps and you'll be able to figure out what went wrong yeah you'll be able sure. to do it thank okay. yeah sure. thank you mm -hmm. okay um so as part of our next step you know i would i would appreciate all of you to uh to go through the previous recordings because we can't you know I mean, we can't uh, just go over uh, the same topics again and again in the interest of time. So as I told you, like, you know, the, the content is planned across four weeks and we plan to complete the entire course in four weeks. And we have the week-wise topics planned accordingly. So please do it uh, uh, accordingly so that we can continue with our sessions. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, that's it for today. Uh, any any questions before I close the call today? Yes. Uh, is is this different from uh, cloud app integration? <laughs> yeah, this is uh, different to uh, cloud application integration. You know, you can. Uh, this is this is more of a data integration, like you know, cloud data integration. Cloud application integration is more of a real time. That's a separate. Uh, that's a separate topic altogether and separate content. And this entire course is planned for only for data integration, which would be covering uh, flat files. I'll be covering, you know, database instance, uh, one scenario for Snowflake and one scenario for AWS. So we'll be working on Salesforce as well uh, for some of the jobs. So I'll be covering flat files, database, Salesforce, uh, Snowflake, and uh, AWS account. One of your AWS uh, scenario, but but is the cloud up uh, up integration the same interface? Is, is no, it, cloud is, data is the same? Cloud data integration. That the one that I'll be covering is cloud uh, data integration, which is also called CDI, and uh, CII is cloud application integration, which is a different course. You know that is not covered in this 
if you are interested in that you know uh, after the training we can continue that after this training after four weeks we can continue but uh, you have to enroll to that course separately okay. okay because it can't be mixed up you know in this course this is data integration okay okay Okay, thank you all. Thanks for joining the session today. We'll meet up again tomorrow at 7 a.m. IST, Indian Standard Time. We can continue our sessions, but please make sure you have your uh, installations and software ready by the time tomorrow. Okay, yeah. Thank you.